Just like parts, assemblies can also have configurations. They can be created through a design table or they can be created manually. While part configurations typically focus on dimensions or features, assembly configurations tend to focus on components, mates, or assembly features. They can be used to represent different versions of a design, or they can be a powerful way to improve performance, particularly when working with large assemblies. In this lesson, we'll take a look at working with configurations using this universal joint assembly. I'll create a second version of the assembly where the single part handle is replaced with a three-piece sub-assembly. If you've never used configurations before, it might be useful for you to review the lesson on part configurations, which covers some fundamental concepts of working with configurations. Here in this assembly, I'd like to create an additional configuration where the single part handle is replaced with a three-piece sub-assembly. If I switch over to the Configuration Manager tab, you can see that only a default configuration exists for this assembly. Before I create a new assembly configuration, I'd like to quickly point out a couple of options and settings here with this default configuration. I'll right-click on the default configuration and select Properties. I'll scroll down to the Advanced Options section. The options here tell SOLIDWORKS how to handle any new features, mates, or any new components that are added when you're working with other configurations. In this example, I'll be adding a new configuration, which will have a new sub-assembly added, and it will be positioned with a couple of mates. So, when I'm working with the new configuration, how should SOLIDWORKS handle those new components and mates here in this default configuration? The Suppress New Features and Mates will suppress new features and mates in this configuration when they're being added in other configurations. Likewise, with the Suppress New Components checkbox, any components I add while working in other configurations will be suppressed in this configuration. To demonstrate the effect of these options, I'll check the Suppress New Features and Mates checkbox, but I will leave the Suppress New Components checkbox cleared, and I'll come back to this in a bit. I'll dismiss the property manager for this default configuration. To add a new configuration, I can roll my cursor over the top level assembly, right click, and select Add Configuration. In the property manager, just as with parts, the area at the top allows you to add a name, description, and comments for the configuration. For this example, I'll just type in version 2 for the name and leave the rest of the settings at their defaults. I'll click OK, and the new assembly configuration is added. Version 2 is now the active configuration, so I can go ahead and make the changes. Since I'll be replacing this single piece handle with a three piece sub assembly, I'll go ahead and suppress it. When I toggle back and forth between the default and version 2 configurations, you can see the difference. I'll make version 2 the active configuration to continue. To add the three-piece sub-assembly, I'll bring up a Windows Explorer window and drag and drop it into the assembly. To position it in the assembly, I'll add a few mates. I'll first add a concentric mate Next, I'll select the two flat faces and add a parallel mate between them. As a side note, if for any reason the faces are parallel but not aligned, you can always use the Mate Alignment buttons in the Property Manager to toggle between the two alignment options. At this point, if I click and drag the sub-assembly, you can see I still need to position it vertically. To do this, I'll select the top face of the bracket and the bottom face of the crankshaft component. For this mate, I'll use a distance mate and type in one millimeter. Now that I've finished adding the necessary mates, let me show you an additional feature that SOLIDWORKS has to offer. This sub-assembly was made using components that have their own configurations. Because I have multiple configurations at the component level, 
I may want to specify which component configurations to use in the version 2 assembly configuration. To do this, I will click on the crank knob and you'll notice a drop down menu appear above the context toolbar. This toolbar only appears because this component has more than one configuration. Actually, there is a button that allows you to select which configuration this applies to within the three piece crank arm subassembly. You can select this configuration, all configurations, or you can specify which configurations to apply it to. I'll select this configuration. To change the crank knob configuration, I will click on the toolbar and I will select the notches configuration and a green check appears to confirm the change. I'll click the green check and the assembly component updates with the new configuration. The crank arm component also has multiple configurations that I could switch between. However, I want to show you another way to change configurations for the subassembly. If I click on the full crank assembly in the feature manager tree, another configuration drop down menu appears. This means I can switch between configurations for the entire subassembly. I'll go ahead and click on the configuration ergonomic, click the green check, and the entire subassembly updates. Both the crank arm and the crank knob have changed. This drop down menu provides a simple way to change between subassembly component configurations while working at the assembly level. Now let me switch back to the default configuration for this assembly. Right away you can see the default configuration displays both the single piece handle as well as the three piece subassembly I just added. But why? Well, if you remember when I pulled up the properties for the default configuration, I left the suppress new components option cleared. That resulted in the components I added in version 2 being unsuppressed in this default configuration. However, I did check the box to suppress new features and mates. Uh, let me dismiss the property manager here. And when I switch over to the feature manager tree, I'll expand the mates folder. Here you can see that the three mates I added in the version 2 configuration are suppressed. And as you would expect, if I click and drag the three piece assembly, the mates are in fact suppressed. The settings I mentioned here are important to consider when you create your own assembly configurations so you can control how new features, mates, and components are handled in each configuration as you're working with other configurations. To finish up this example here, I'd like the default configuration to only include the one piece handle. So I'll go ahead and suppress the three piece subassembly. I'll switch back over to the configuration manager tab and I'll rename the default configuration by slow double clicking on it and I'll type in version one. When I toggle between the two configurations, they now look as you would expect.